much mode, uh -huh. so you can, you know. Sure. The computer software piracy is a federal We're taking. I want to show you here how far you've mission in your diet, help you lose weight. You walk. Sure. This is a used for more than this. They're being used as a computer. 2,000 calories. The computer. Jan Lewis. Jan, on how many strokes per minute you're doing. Physical condition and set and monitor computers in their way. Let me show you. The pedometer you'd put on your belt and tell you how far. It comes with a clock, of course. Care of business. Care of ourselves. Hi and. The Oracle Small. Of the computer. CompuServe and Bix. The There's the pedometer mode of exercise. And I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me some very neat health and fitness gadgets. Even how many computer chronicles. We'll see other software that can analyze your just taking better computerized version. Look at computers. The alarm goes off. It tells. Welcome to the computer. Computer Chronicles is brought to you by Computer Chronicles. Additional funding is provided by. As you can see, you can put it in stopwatch. Bite information. Other than that, it has a poll. Tell me how far I've run, but then I can. Welcome to the This week is. It has an alarm over here, so I can set a calorie goal after burning physical exercise. There's no water, but there is. Association, which reminds you that. You know, computers these days are being. Though I guess really these are little. This is called the Sportsmaster. Remember the old. Change. And by Intel Corporation personal computer and uh, measure how long you've been running but better than that runners watch but it does more Press this button your chronicles and it calculates how many calories I've consumed mm. so far in that X how long you've been rowing how these are rowing machines the kind you work out on Smith is made possible in same as being in a real rowboat except calories per hour you're burning part by the software publishers of this mode by pressing that button I put my finger on the sensor and it tells me what my pulse is during the course of my exercise program this is even better this is a little automated device you put your finger in there and you can automatically calculate your blood pressure the diastolic the systolic blood pressure also does your pulse it seems to me Jan while we usually talk about computers and software on a disc on this show we're really now into the point where we're seeing little computers and all these gadgets aren't we yeah we have so many computers that we play with and don't even know it what's happened is that the microprocessor, which is at the heart of the personal computer, uh, at this point has the ability of having so much intelligence on it in such little tiny spaces uh -huh. for low cost that we have lots of these little microprocessors in gadgets around. We don't know they're computers, but they are. Yeah. And my prediction is that we will know the computers when they start putting little RS-232 <laughs> ports on here and we can actually put right, them into our computer right. and do the analysis then. Jan, today we're going to take a look at some great health and fitness software. We'll see programs that analyze your nutrients. program for you. Also software that does biofeedback and helps you get control over tension. Now you're all familiar with Nautilus exercise machines, but the newest generation of these machines are not only computerized, they talk back to you. We begin with this report. You can usually identify an exercise machine by its shiny chrome handles, clanking weights, and purring motors. The grinding repetitive action might be effective but it's not the most exciting way to keep in shape. Ironically, adding a computer to a new kind of exercise machine called a power sizer has resulted in something a little less mechanical and a little more personal. Well, the machine talks to you and it helps to prompt you to either speed up your workout, slow it down so you have the right pacing. Uh, it also helps you to make sure that you go through the full range of movement, which is oftentimes uh, uh, a bad habit that you will develop in a regular exercise program if you do not have a trainer with you at all times. The machine, in essence, is a personal... So, members use a series of six power sizer machines that provide 12 different kinds of exercises. To use a machine, you type in a personal code number. From then on, the computer monitors your progress through the different routines. With a synthetic voice, it will urge you on, scold you, and adjust the resistance of the machine instantly, based on your strength and level of practice. At the end of a session, the computer prints out a record of your progress. The machine behaves almost like a human coach, and it's tough to cheat. It's very difficult on, on the, the free weight systems, you can always slow down, you can always do the, the, the exercise improperly by not having your full range of motion. 
Uh, if you stop in the program short of what the computer wants to do, it will tell you to push on because it's watching you all the time. Joining us in the studio now is Barry Roa, president of Step 2, and next to Barry, Dr. Pax Nydorf, president of Psychological Software. Jan? Pax, people have been into health and fitness for some time now. How does a personal computer help with that effort? Well, it's really a very useful tool in the home now, especially for any kind of personal development. There is software available that is extremely useful. And the behavior modification software that I brought is really great for helping with weight reduction. Can I, how do you link in the behavior modification with the use of the PC? Well, the PC becomes actually the personal therapist and helps the person is interactive and helps them deal with this on a very personal level. All right, Barry, you have a program that deals with physical fitness as opposed to the, the, the diet and nutrition things we'll see in just a minute from PAX. Uh, describe your program. What, what does physical fitness evaluation do? It brings into the home or the office computer the proper techniques for uh, accomplishing a physical fitness program, learning how to do it, and, and keeping up with it. All right, show me what you mean. We've already set up a profile, unfortunately, of me uh, in here. And, and uh, so this has my height, my weight, my age, and so on and so forth. How would I actually use this to evaluate my physical condition? Well, you would first uh, input all of your specific information here, like we just did, mm -hmm. and then go to the main menu. The first uh, five choices are the parameters of fitness that you see there, the flexibility, okay, and strength, and you would go from one to the okay, other. Okay, so the five main characteristics you're looking at are flexibility, strength, endurance, power, and pinch test foot type. What does that mean? What's number five? Pinch test is an anthropomeric measurement of your body fat. Oh, okay, okay. So sh how, how do these different things work? Well, we would go to flexibility, for example, and choose something in the flexibility area. Flexibility area. Achilles tendon is a Popular. Okay, so wait, wait a minute. So these are six different exercises that would test my flexibility? That's correct. Okay, so you And different parts of the body. Okay, so go ahead. And Achilles tendon, well? typically you'll have an uh, ex explanation of how to do the okay. exercise the correct way. There's a picture, a graphic of what it looks like. Okay, so, and this is the test I would have to perform to, to measure my, my condition. You want to make yourself go into that position, is that the idea? That's correct, and we're looking at the angle of the ankle here, the rear ankle, and every test has a scoring system of three points, three being the better. Okay, so suppose I did this very well, I would then get three points. Three points for you. And then do some other measure of my flexibility. That's correct, so that's correct. How about a shoulder stretch? Okay. Mm -hmm. How to do it? There's a little picture okay, and a happy exercise, face. Et mm -hmm. The norms that you see on the screen are sometimes grouped in age groups or gender. Okay, how about some of those other categories besides the flexibility? What else do we have there? How about strength? Okay. How about the push-ups? You go to push-ups? Okay, so we do, four. I do some push-ups. Uh, push-ups are done by women as a modified technique. Uh -huh. Knees bent. For the men, it's on nice. toes. Right. And again, the, the data. Okay. You're good at that also, three points. Okay. <laughs> and then go back to, let's just see quickly, because we don't have time to look at all these. Uh, say endurance, what would an example of endurance be? Run walking, heart okay. rate recovery is very good. How to do it. You don't need any special equipment for this. A uh -huh. bench is necessary here, but everybody has a bench or a strong chair. Mm -hmm. How to do it. Okay, and there's what to do and how to measure it and so on and so forth. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, how about when you're all done this now, what, what, what was the end result of going through this whole exercise? We would go on this menu to this display today's data, number mm -hmm. seven. And here you see a, a snapshot of your physical fitness level at this time. Okay, so had I done all these exercises, it would give me some measure, and then what would I do at that point? Then go on some physical exercise program to try to improve that? Improve your weaknesses and uh, maintain your strengths. Yes. And then go, is, yeah. I'm sorry. Is go there ahead, any um, danger in doing this without the help of a professional? There is no danger in using this program. This program was written by an exercise kinesiologist and reviewed before publication by two doctors of chiropractic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. If I can ask you to get out of that, we want to take a look at Pax's program now. And while he's doing that, Pax, what what is your program about? It's called. Uh, Fat, never fat again. Right. And, and this is a computer program that helps you lose weight? Right. The thrust of the program is taking responsibility for your own weight loss so that uh, it's a way of life. You know that you can lose a lot of weight on a diet, but people gain the weight right back again. Uh -huh. So diets are basically unsuccessful. And what we strive for and what the program teaches is how to have a way of life where you really enjoy food. And when you're eating, you're focusing on what you're doing 
and uh, it's an easy way to lose weight and have that as part of your life. Sh show us the program if you would, thanks. Okay. Now this, while you're, you can just uh, set that up there uh, while I ask you the question, but this would really be something in lieu of, of uh, signing up for some weight program somewhere or, or get, buying some diet program? Well, this would not be in lieu, yes, this would be in lieu of a, of a diet program. This would be preferable, we would say, uh -huh. of course, because it is a way of life. And uh, we explain, of course, the dynamics behind uh, it shows the behavior, different, different elements. You behavior have modification. Okay, what's that? Uh, you can go through a week by week uh, process where you do something different every week and add that to your uh, way of eating uh -huh. that you don't read or watch TV while you eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That you always eat in the same place. When practical, you have to be. Okay, so this is kind of a little tutorial here. Right. Telling you what to do. And that goes through the week by week process. Okay. Uh, then in the other parts of the program, we deal with uh, the games that people yeah, play. Yeah, what, what is that? Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, psychological mm -hmm. games that people play with themselves where they think they're uh, losing weight or should be losing weight or dieting, but the weight is never lost. And they go through all these different uh, little games and okay, so that. Mm -hmm. This is really counseling the person against conning themselves in a sense and right. thinking they're, they're, they're not doing right. That. And this goes to that. I might add here that there are yeah. subliminal messages throughout the program uh -huh. that flash on the screen, screen in order to program the unconscious mind. Uh, messages like, think thin, hmm. you are in control of your body. Have we and actually been subjected to that in this yes, last couple of minutes? Yes, you've actually been subjected to that. <laughs> I feel less hungry already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get us back to that menu. What about burning calories? What, what does that do? Okay. Uh, this is an interesting part of the program that uh, once you... Uh, Oh. enter your weight, uh -huh. for example here, let's say I weigh 165 pounds, okay. then the program will tell you how much of a particular exercise or activity you need to do in order to lose a pound of weight a week. Okay, so hold it. These are the different activities on the left, and then it tells me how many calories I would burn up doing that for 10 minutes or for one hour? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what else, what else would that show me then? It goes through that. Then it, it tells you the dynamics uh, that eating beyond a certain amount, your need for uh -huh. calorie intake, and what you need to do in order to keep the yeah. extra pounds from being gained. So I might use Barry's program to figure out what kind of shape I'm in, and then go to your program to really advise me on what kinds of things I have to do to get into better shape or to lose weight. And right. So on. Our program, you know, really insists on some kind of yeah. exercise. Do you have any evidence that, that this works? I mean, uh, it seems we have a lot of satisfied customers. You do. Yes. Okay. Well, that, that's good enough. Now, many colleges pay attention to the physical fitness of their athletes, but increasingly, colleges are having to pay attention to the physical fitness of the entire student body. At Skyline College here in the San Francisco Peninsula, they're doing it with computers. Here's a report. As with all of the nation's schools of higher learning, you've got to pass plenty of exams to get into San Bruno, California's Skyline College. But unlike most of them, this college won't let you in without an exam for physical fitness. The idea behind the testing is not to have the students pass or fail, but just to determine the fitness of their bodies, so that over the course of the semester, they'll hopefully be able to see some improvement. For some schools, keeping track of this many students would be a logistical nightmare. But the evaluation program's director, Coach Bob Luhati, has simplified the process by computer. Each student's test results are entered manually into a PC program designed by a former student. The program compares the results of the initial tests with ones done at the end of the semester. A student's progress, or lack thereof, is then calculated. Without the computer, it would have been impossible. Uh, for instance, since uh, 83 to the present time, we've, uh, we have records on uh, 12,400 plus students. And uh, if I were to do that the way I did when I took a test and measurement uh, class when I was in college, I would spend uh, two years just uh, tabulating data by hand. The program simplifies record keeping, but also allows the data to be sorted by age, sex, ethnic background, weight, and height. So it serves two purposes, to motivate the students and as a resource for further study. In San Bruno, California, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods.
Joining us in the studio now is Dr. George Fuller. He's director of the Biofeedback Institute of San Francisco and also with us Elizabeth Hans, president of Escher Research. Jen? George, I understand you're going to be showing us a biofeedback uh, program today. Can you give us some background on what is biofeedback? Well, biofeedback is a learning procedure where you learn how to control your mind and body through feedback, through information that you get about the change in your stress level, and your heart rate, your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Now, how does a computer on. help with that? Well, obviously it speeds things up, uh, can calculate the physiologic measurements, and in this case it can actually graph or give you graphics to tell you what your body's doing. All right, Betty, part of uh, what your body does depends on what you eat, I guess. You are what you eat, and your program uh, deals with that. It's called the food processor. What does that program do? Well, there are a lot of functions, but I'd like to show you the three basic ones that most everyone will use, uh -huh. and they are to calculate what you should be having on an average daily basis. Yeah. Secondly, what you have eaten, and thirdly, compare the two so you can see where there are diet deficiencies and well, excesses. Sh yeah, show us how you do that. We've already done a recommendation for a woman here on the screen, and it's always personalized for what your characteristics are. So this is a particular individual, weight, height, age, and sex, and so on. That's right. And once you've done that, then you're ready to do uh, the food list, which is to enter the foods you're going to eat. We've already entered a, a ham sandwich, a potato salad, a pickle, and so forth to so get a lunch. So this might be the meal this woman would have for lunch. That's or right. Or had mm -hmm. for lunch, let's That's say. That's right. Okay. And we'll click on here to enter a food. You enter either a whole name or part of a name. Okay. We're going to add a piece of apple pie so to this lunch. So she decides to add apple pie to lunch. Right. So a window opens and shows a variety of foods, and we're mm. going to select the one that we want which is apple pie. Piece of pie. Okay. We add one piece of it and we're done with our lunch. Okay. So the next thing would be to analyze it. Now at this stage we have an awful lot of numbers on the screen and for the professionals those are probably all they need. But for the rest of us who... Okay, these numbers are describing all the different nutrients and ingredients that were in that meal. That's correct, okay. in the proportions you entered. Which, as you say, doesn't mean much to me right now. That's it's an <laughs> awful lot. Okay. So the next thing to do is really to look at the bar chart, because this compares the two. And from this bar chart, you can see where there are highs and lows that are off mm. the norm. Now, this 100% line gives you what should be for a whole day. Okay, what you should have day. gotten in these nutrients for the day. Right, and this meal... In this case, here's calories listed, and it gave us half of our calories for the whole okay, so day. So just that one little lunch <laughs> uh -huh. gave us 50% of what we should have had in calories. Mm -hmm. Right. The sodium we're way over on exactly. just this one meal. Mm -hmm. And this is where the user would look at this and say, well, I don't believe I had that many calories. Okay. So let's take a look at that. Uh -huh. And so we bring up this chart, which lists the foods that we just entered, and it's already clicked on calories. And the apple pie was the mm -hmm. killer in calories. It did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And if we clicked on sodium. Yeah, what gave us all that sodium? You can see the, ham, the ham sandwich, sandwich and the pickle did it. Uh -huh. And you can click on any of the nutrients. Yeah, so what about cholesterol? What would have what would all have right. made the cholesterol? That's primarily in the potato, the potato salad, salad with salad. eggs. Mm -hmm. That doesn't distinguish between high density and low density. The high density and low density is in your blood. It's not in the food. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> and these are some of the basic uses a person would have for it. Uh, we have the program do a lot of other features, averaging daily intakes, uh -huh. you can add new foods, and it comes on the IBM as well as the Apple. So you can really look inside and figure out what's going on with your diet and where you're getting into trouble. Exactly. And, and how to modify your diet accordingly. If I'm eating something that's not on your list, can I add that? Yes, you can. Oh. But it comes with 2,400 foods, and mm -hmm. we have additional databases going up to almost 8 and 10,000 foods that are available. Betty, you have two printouts of uh, those food charts there. What does that show us? Yes, here's a candy bar lunch with potato chips and a pop. And, this and it is shows a, you you don't get very much out of that lunch, uh, obviously. That's true. And this bar graph shows a fast food lunch with a hamburger, fries, and shakes, where you get probably more than you need mm -hmm. in half a day. And uh, too much sodium, that's for sure, coming out yes. of that. <laughs> okay, George, let's turn to your biofeedback program. What is it called, and exactly what does it do? Well, it's called Compute, and it's put out by the Thought Technology Company. Mm -hmm. And basically, a small uh, port, there's, uh, like a bio port, is put into the computer. This uh -huh. is the whole interface. I put my fingers on two electrodes, which allow me to measure the electrical changes on the surface of my skin. Okay. Mm -hmm. and that measures my fight or flight reaction, my stress level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can look at my reactivity to uh, change of various kinds. For example, if I have tense muscles, I may also have internal tension. Or I can look at uh, various kinds of words that may trigger off feelings, okay. so I can word association. What part of the program this, do you have up here? Well, this is a uh, Calm Patterns program, and you s you'll see a hexagon um, that will change as I get more relaxed. And uh, in fact, um, 
I can turn on the audio and allow it to change in color or size. Uh, the more I relax or the more tense I get. So you try to learn how to relax by trying to make that pattern get larger and larger. That's right. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. And various kinds of programs like this allow you to see your change. Uh, I'm going to take a look at a bar graph uh -huh. now that measures the change. Mm -hmm. And um, that bar graph will look at my stress level over time. So while, while we look at the bar graph, uh, let's see, let's use calm bar. There we go. No. Mm -hmm. And um, all of the biofeedback programs are for the purpose of internalizing the learning. For example, mm -hmm. you see your reaction on a screen, and once you know what that reaction is and how to lower it, you then have internal awareness, and you can reduce okay, your show, stress show level. Okay, show us what's going on here. This uh, bar graph allows me to see what I'm doing to change. For example, right now I'm getting more aroused as I wondered how it was going to measure here. And if I were to get a little relaxed, and let's see if I can do that during the program. There we go. I'm actually using what skills I've learned to try to bring my relaxation down. And mm. if you can see it at all on the screen, it's uh, yeah. reducing. That's great. Oh, good. <laughs> You're doing well. Boy. Okay, what okay. about Calm Pre? You mentioned that. Now, time. the Calm Pre program is uh, a little game. And, you know, we all like uh, video games, or at least some of us do. And um, these games allow you to learn how to relax in the face of a stressor. Uh -huh. uh, one stress is uh, doing some performance task. And so here's a performance task in which I'm driving a car and hopefully missing the wall and the potholes, at the same time as I relax, I'm speeding up the car. The speed is a function of your relaxation. That's right. Okay, the so you're hitting the keyboard, you're just steering it with your left hand. Right, I'm steering it with one hand, and as I relax, the car is going faster and faster, allowing me to then use this control to speed up mm -hmm. my So school. you really have to learn how to relax in this very tense situation of playing <laughs> right. this video game. That's right. All right, that's great. George, Betty, thank you very much. That's our look at health and fitness software. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, Grid Systems Corporation has introduced a new 386 laptop that runs at 16 megahertz. Called the Tempest Grid Case 1537, the new laptop is powered by an attachable battery pack or an external AC converter. The standard model has 4 megabytes of RAM, which can be upgraded to 8 megabytes. The Tempest supports MS-DOS, Xenix, and Unix System 5386 operating systems. The price? Just slightly below $15,000. AST Research says it's slashing prices as much as $1,800 on some hard drive models of its i486 computers. The cuts will affect the 25 and 33 megahertz premium 486 systems. That includes desktop and tower models. For example, the cost of the premium 486-25 will be cut from 2 to 11 percent. The ISA-based premium 486-33 desktop will be reduced in price by up to $650. Interested in upgrading that old 386 system? California's Transcomputer claims its new Trans 486 PX CPU translator module can increase performance by three to five times. The company says the board is mostly compatible with systems using the Chips and Technologies chipsets. It will not work with computers from IBM, AST, Compaq and Epson. Transcomputer, however, says it will modify the module to fit any 386 motherboard if requested. The 2.5 square inch module is priced at $486. An additional $1,200 will buy a 25 megahertz 486 processor chip. Taking a look at this week's top 10 software for the IBM PC and compatibles, PC Connection reports Microsoft's new Windows 3.0 has claimed the number one position. That's followed by the 6.0 version of PC Tools Deluxe and the former number one king, Quarterdeck's Expanded Memory Manager 386. WordPerfect 5.1 is next, and InfoSelect is in at number five. Rounding out the top ten for the PC are Cram, PC File 5.0, Quicken 3.0, Fastback Plus 2.1, and Procom Plus. Claiming its beaten industry leader IBM, Japan's Hitachi Corporation unveiled a new generation of mainframe computers it says is the world's fastest. The Hitachi M880 processors use about 20% less power and require about half the space of the latest IBM processor family. The new computers will not be available in Japan until the fall and in the United States until the second quarter of 1991. 
Such mainframes are used mainly by large corporations for information management systems. In this week's Ask Dr. John feature, a viewer wants to know the difference between basic programming languages, Basic A, and GW Basic. With the answer, here is Dr. John Heilborn. As a matter of fact, the two basics that you mention are almost never purchased. Basic A is included when you buy a real IBM PC computer, and GW Basic is a part of the package that Microsoft includes when you buy MS-DOS. As for the differences between basics, most are similar enough that they can run each other's programs without problems. However, there's no guarantee that they will. On the other hand, there are quite a few basics around that provide considerably more compatibility from program to program than either Basic A or GW Basic. Two of these would be basic compilers, like IBM and Microsoft's basic compilers, or the more recent product from Microsoft, Quick Basic. The advantage of the basic compilers is that they provide much greater speed, and they allow you to add program commands to the language. Also, they tend to produce a much more structured code. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Dr. John. Sales of this week's number one software, Microsoft's new Windows 3.0, are right on schedule with some 100,000 units sold within the first two weeks of its introduction. That makes Windows the company's biggest selling product ever. Microsoft says it has also sold several hundred thousand copies as upgrades to its currently installed Windows user base. Users are charged $50 to upgrade their older versions. One of the main features of the new Windows is that it breaks the 640K DOS barrier and lets the user access up to 48 megabytes of memory. Microsoft says it hopes to sell one million units of the software within the first year. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Maria Gabriel. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, which offers online information related to today's subject. Members type Go Chronicles. Non-members call for more information. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, by PC Connection and Mac Connection, by Byte Magazine and VIX, the Byte Information Exchange and by Intel Corporation, personal computer enhancement. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.